Hello, I'm Michael from Glow Motion Control, and welcome to a GDK Basics video. This is our second video in a series covering GDK. If you haven't already, please take a look at our first video, the Introduction to Galil Design Kit. You can find a link in the description below. In this video, I will be walking you through the first steps of getting a Galil Motion controller up and running, starting with getting the controller powered on and connected to a PC. Then, we will send some commands to the controller in order to move a motor, and finally, we will download and run a simple program on the controller so that it can run on its own. The controller that I will be using to do this is a DMC-30012 single-axis motion controller and amplifier, wired to a brushless servo motor with encoder. First, I power on the controller with a 24-volt DC power supply. The controller is then wired to a PC via an Ethernet cable. Following best practices for motion control systems, I have a separate dedicated network interface card, or NIC, that I will be using to connect. This NIC will need to be properly configured with a static IP address to communicate with the motion controller. On Windows, I will do this by opening the control panel, navigating to the network and sharing center, and clicking change adapter settings. Then I right click the NIC that I have connected my controller to and select properties. What I need to do now is navigate to internet protocol version four and set a static IP address. I will set my PC's IP as 192.168.1.1, which is a very common IP for this setup. Click OK to confirm. Now that my PC is properly configured, I need to assign an IP address to the motion controller. To do so, I need to open GDK and navigate to the manager. I then open the IP requests tab and click listen. This will look for controllers on the network without an IP address. And once identified, my controller will be listed here. For choosing an IP address, there are two options. Ping search will instruct GDK to look at all devices on the current network and determine a currently unused IP address. Secondly, you can enter an IP address manually. I will go ahead and manually set my desired IP address. Clicking assign address will complete the process. Doing this will automatically change the manager over to the next tab, available addresses. Any Galil controller on the network with an IP address already assigned, as well as any available serial ports or PCI controllers, will be listed here. The final step before GDK can connect to the controller is to create an alias. An alias is a name GDK uses to refer to hardware that it can connect to, and also uses for managing connection details. To create an alias, I select my controller from the list and click Create Alias. GDK will automatically choose a name for me. However, I can click on the name to change it to something more appropriate. Now let's try and move a motor. To do this, we will need to send some commands to the controller, which can be done from the terminal. Clicking on the terminal icon will open up a new terminal tool. To connect our controller, we need to select it from the drop-down list. You can see at the top of the terminal details about the controller, as well as a colon. That colon indicates that the connection was successful and we are ready to communicate. Before we send any commands to the controller, it is worth noting that all DMC commands are specified as capital letters. First, the command SP sets the speed of my motor, which I will set at 4,000 counts per second. My motor has an encoder with a resolution of 4,000 counts per revolution, and so this value corresponds to one revolution per second. Next, I will specify the distance to move with the PR command. PR stands for position relative. Lastly, to begin the move, I will send the command BGA, which will begin motion on the first axis, A. Now that I've got my motor moving, let's move on to the final task, getting the controller to run on its own. As an example, let's assume my controller needs to perform a move forward then backward by one revolution whenever an operator presses a button, which is wired to digital input one. To do this, I need to create a DMC program. This is done via the editor tool. Whenever the editor is opened, a blank program is created, which I can then add to. Here is my finalized program. Let's walk through it line by line. The first line, pound start, is a label for the start of my program. Next, I have a message, MG, indicating that the controller is waiting for my button to be pressed. Following the message is another label. This label is indicating the start of the loop, which will wait, WT, 50 milliseconds, and look at the input my button is wired to. If the input is not yet activated, the loop will repeat, waiting another 50 milliseconds before checking. If the input is activated, the code will proceed to the next section. This next section contains my forward and backward move. Here you can see I set a speed, 
relative move distance, and then begin motion. After the move is a trip point, AM, which stands for after motion. This will hold up my program until the move is complete. After the move is complete, I then perform the same move in the opposite direction and wait for that move to complete. Finally, I jump, JP, back to the start of my program, and the process repeats itself. Before we run the program, let's go ahead and adjust the layout of GDK so that we can see both the editor and terminal on screen at the same time. Clicking and holding this icon will allow the selected tool to be dragged and dropped to different areas of GDK. I can then click on the border between each tool to adjust the size of the windows. Now that we can see both the editor and terminal, let's execute the program. In the editor, clicking on the play button will download the program from the PC into the controller's memory, and then execute that program. If successful, we should see our message appear in the terminal. If I then press my button, we should see the motor move back and forth, and then another message should appear in the terminal. Voila! Now that we've confirmed our program is working properly, let's go back to the terminal and issue the BP command, which stands for burn program. This will ensure that the next time the controller boots up, the program is there in memory so that we can use it again. We have now finished our last step, running the controller on its own. That concludes our video on the basics of GDK in the Manager, Terminal, and Editor. The next video will cover automated motor configuration using the test tool, as well as tuning, which will include using both the oscilloscope and tuner tools. Questions about the video? Please reach out to our support team, either by phone or by email.